let's talk about the Levon affair. Levon affair. So this is named after an Israeli uh, defense minister. Okay, and he he was he had to resign, and this caused a scandal inside of Israel because someone had launched Operation Susanna, and no one would take responsibility for it. Right. And it, once again, this gets very weird because at first the Israelis are all denying it. The, you know, the prime minister says it wasn't me. And then the defense minister says, I didn't do it either. <laughs> and then mysteriously, 60 years later, Israel is honoring the agents who took out, uh, who carried out this attack. Why would you honor agents that you have nothing to do with? So let's look at Operation Susanna or the Lavon affair. This is in 1954. Keep in mind, this is very, very shortly after Nasser right uh the probably the most famous arab president in history right who was a, a you know strong supporter of the palestinian cause um he was the most popular president not just in egypt but as i said the entire arab world you know when he died you had millions literally millions of people in the streets millions so, staunch supporter of pan arabism so when he takes power, he opposes Zionism. The Israelis hate him. So the Israelis send a sleeper cell, or rather activate a sleeper cell, uh, uh, Mossad agents who are inside Egypt, to start carrying out attacks. And these are false flag attacks. So they are meant to, to make the Egyptian government look bad, so that there's a rift between Egypt and the United States and, and Britain. Or... Blame it on the Muslim Brotherhood, you know? Blame it on the, the Egyptian communists. Blame it on Nasser. It doesn't matter. But make it look like it's not the Israelis. So who do, who do you think they attacked? The Israelis, on July 2nd in 1954, blew up uh, the Alexandria post office in Egypt. Then on July 14th, they blew up uh, two U.S. consular libraries. So again... The, the, these are official, you know, U.S. government buildings, right? Or rather, projects and buildings. So this is um, one library in Cairo, and the other one is in Alexandria. Then on July 23rd, they blew up um, uh, two cinemas, a railway station, and a central post office in Cairo. The idea here was also, uh, you know, to blow up British-owned and American-owned buildings, um, you know, one of them being um, an MGM cinema. And so, the, while this was happening, the Egyptians started to understand what was happening, and they wrapped up the entire cell. And then they, they put all of these Israeli, the 11 Israeli agents, on trial in public, and they confessed to everything, right? Philip Nathanson was literally, you know, caught on the way <laughs> to a cinema where he was, that he was about to blow up. The bomb actually exploded in his pocket. And while he was on the way to blow it up, the, there was a fire truck already waiting outside the cinema to put out, you know, the, the uh, eventual fire from his, from his terrorist attack. So the man who, who ran the cell was named John Darling. That's a fake name, right? He was, he was um, a Mossad agent. And so, as I said, these were, these were, uh, um, this was a sleeper cell made up of Egyptian Jews. And... What the Israelis were doing is very, very bad because not only were they trying to blow up American um, and British establishments and kill while doing is potentially kill uh, not just uh, e Egyptians, but also, you know, uh, foreigners, whether they're British or American. You know, they, they like to claim, well, you know, it was it was a safe terrorist attack because they planted these bombs at night and... I just told you, one of the Mossad agents on the way to planting the thing blew himself up. How do you know that he wouldn't have maybe hurt somebody else? You don't. So, you know, the, the, this idea that, well, Israel never does dangerous terrorist attacks. It's always, you know, they, they will call the hotel before it happens if it's the King David Hotel or they'll, they'll warn the Americans beforehand or some crap, you know. No, this is, this is rubbish. So what they did here is, is they exploited the Egyptian Jewish community, right? So what the Israelis will say is that, oh, well, you know, the, the Arab governments kicked out all the Jews. It's a complete lie, completely made up. Israel did, did this on purpose in, in, in Iraq, for example, in 1950, 1951. Israel blew up synagogues, so Jewish temples. Let me repeat that. Israel 
sent Mossad agents to blow up Jewish synagogues inside Iraq so that Jews, Iraqi Jews who are living there would, would um, become, you know, uh, uh, scared and just leave and pack up and go live in Israel. And now, just, you know, going back to the Levon affair, so in 1954, in Egypt, there are 50,000 Jews who live in Egypt at this point. 50,000 Jews. Where do you think they all are now? They're in Israel. So, you know, one way or another, this was going to be a win-win for Israel. You know, either they cause a rift between Egypt and the United States and Britain, and, you know, they make it look like Nasser is an incapable leader. He can't keep foreigners safe. He can't keep his own people safe. He's too, um, you know, incompetent to take control of the Suez Canal. That's two years later, remember? So this is a big, big issue at the time. Or they, they get Jews so scared that they just emigrate and come live in Israel. Now, why, why do you think uh, Israel wants this policy? Because Israelis are a minority. Israelis are a minority who rule over a majority. There are more Palestinians in Palestine than Israelis. <laughs> Go figure, because this is Palestine. So, you know, a bunch of European Jews who are coming here are obviously going to be a minority. Now, the thing is, they, in order to legitimize Israel as a country, it's not enough. It's not enough to become a UN member state. Israel needs to increase the population. Israel wants to market itself and portray itself as the Jewish state. You always hear this phrase, the Jewish state. I mean, th that sounds ridiculous because if you, if you listen to the Israeli propaganda, the Hasbara, they would have you believe that before, you know, um, the, the 1890s, before Zionism was invented, there were no Jews, which is ridiculous because you've had Jews for thousands of years. But they, they make it seem like Zionism and Judaism are one and the same when they're clearly not. One is a religion, the other one's a political ideology that was just recently invented in Europe. So, this worked out very well for the Israelis because, you know, they, um, despite getting caught, as I said, 50,000 Jews were put at risk and then they, they felt, you know, scared because now the Egyptian government had, had you know, rolled up uh, uh, a sleeper cell, a Mossad sleeper cell. And once again, go going back to my original point, Israel exploited, Israel recruited and used Egyptian Jews to carry out these attacks. It used its own community. These, this put 50,000 Jews in Egypt at risk, and they fled and in increased the Israeli population. And they did the same thing in Iraq. Now, in Iraq, when, when we talk about these synagogue bombings in 1950, 1951, one of those bombings, yes, there more, there's more than one, one of those bombings it's not clear whether it was Mossad or not. The others, the other bombings, were definitely Mossad. Mossad is Israel's uh, intelligence service, right? They were absolutely Mossad. And the fact that Israel is ready to, to blow up uh, Jewish temples, I mean, this is disgusting. I, I think it tells you everything you need to know, right? It's like, at all costs, they'll do whatever it takes. You know, Israel doesn't care about its own people. It, it claims to be the Jewish state. And clearly... It uses Jews in other countries to carry out its political goals. It blows up Jewish temples in, in Jewish synagogues in other countries to achieve its goals. Israel doesn't care about Jews. Israel hijacks Judaism to use it as a political vehicle for Zionism. Israel doesn't care about its allies. The UK, you know, shamefully, the UK helped Israel to become, uh, you know, the colony that it is today. The Balfour Declaration of 1917, you know, w w with, with the UK Foreign Secretary promising a Jewish state in Palestine. Who is our Foreign Secretary to promise a, a state anywhere for anyone? Do I need to pick up the globe again and <laughs> remind you that, you know, Palestine is down here, okay, and the UK is up here? What the hell do these two things have to do with each other? Colonialism. So then, not only that, but in 1946 and 47 and 48, with the King David Hotel bombing and this threat of Zionist terrorism in London and, and across the UK, the, the United Kingdom and Whitehall, they just give up this whole thing to the United Nations and dump it, you know, and they're like, screw it, you know, let them take over, let them ha get what they want. And uh, we're in 2023 and, and this whole issue has still not been resolved. Uh, Palestinians, you know, live, are still living under colonialism. It just switched from Turkish to British to, to uh, Jewish, or rather European Zionism. Yep. That's it. So you've had 
500 years of occupation in the Middle East, Ottoman, British, and French, and now Israeli and American.